So this is a, a brief video about um, a paper on the behavior of catalase at the air water interface that is going to be published in the journal Microscopy as part of their uh, celebration of 70 years of publication. This is the title of our paper and the authors are Xiaoxia Chen, Jade Lee, Vinoth Kumar and myself. And um, basically what happened is we were working on a variety of different specimens and many of them behaved very well, but some of them behaved in a very unusual and interesting way. And the first um, slide here, which is figure one in the paper, it's the main result, shows uh, some cryo EM images of in, in the panel A of catalase molecules at about uh, one milligram per ml, simply blotted as a thin film, uh, which is the traditional uh, Dubochet plunge freeze method for making cryo EM specimens. And you can see they form um, long ribbons where the catalase molecules are all in the same orientation. So this is not good for getting the 3D structure. And so we thought this, and, and they, they, these um, uh, ribbons only occur at thin regions uh, where the ice film has been blotted down to be quite thin. So it's interacting with both surfaces, both of the air water interface surfaces. So what we thought, uh, was it would be good to prevent that interaction by adding detergents. And this is, shows what happens when you do that. So the, the panel B, top right, uh, shows the same uh, specimen of catalase, but with um, uh, 10 millimolar dodecyl maltoside added to the sample. And you can see the behavior changes in that you now have in the center a, uh, a raft of catalase molecules, but in a different orientation. So they have the, the, the thin dimension of the catalase molecule um, all in the same orientation. Then there's a bit of a gap. Um, and then uh, again, you have the, the, the similar view to the, the view in, in panel A, uh, but with a different detergent, particularly uh, CHAPSO, which we used at about eight millimolar. Uh, you can see in the bottom left now, these uh, ribbons and rafts have all disappeared and we've now got um, a nice distribution, uh, many fewer molecules because when you calculate how many molecules you should have at one or two milligrams per ml uh, protein concentration, it's not very many. Uh, so this is uh, what you expect. And then uh, what we did was then to increase the concentration up to 20 or 30 milligrams per ml, in which case you get uh, an image like the one on the right, which shows catalase molecules in all orientations and at the right concentration from what you expect. And so the next slide shows uh, similar uh, cryo EM images with the concentration in A, one milligram per ml, B at 10 mg per mil, and uh, C at 25 milligrams per ml. And then on the right hand panel, you can see the orientation distribution. Um, with uh, Katerina uh, Nydanova's method for displaying it. And you can see panel A was what you get without any detergents at all. Um, panel B uh, is when you get uh, some better distribution with detergent. And then panel C is what you get with the optimum concentration of um, CHAPSO, which is what we used in the structure. And when you do that, if you collect, um, a certain number of images, about 300 images, um, you could then get uh, with something like 90,000 uh, catalase mo single particles, molecules, you get a density map with the structure in the top left here, which shows a resolution of about 2.2 angstroms between Fourier shell correlation between the two halves of the half map densities or 2.24 between uh, the map and uh, the atomic model of catalase, which has been rebuilt into the cryo -M density derived from earlier X-ray structures. And so the overall uh, structure, it's a tetramer with uh, domain swapping. And in, in the bottom, you see uh, the ligands and some helix and beta sheet structure, which on the last slide uh, shows really nice density uh, for the, the heme group in catalase, for the NADPH uh, 
um, uh, ligand that pr provides the reducing power to re-reduce the, the heme. And then there's a helix and the beta sheet structure viewed um, along the beta sheet and perpendicular to the beta sheet. So, so the bottom line is that um, a, a good way to eliminate the interaction of molecules uh, in cryo-EM, single particles in cryo-EM, um, with the air-water interface is to use detergents. And the one we found that was the best was CHAPSO, which we're using at eight or 10 um, millimolar. And we also looked at its effect on the surface tension of water, and it turns out um, that uh, eight or 10 milligrams, you don't need that much. You can get a reduction in surface tension and a drop in the, orient the orientation of the molecules at lower concentrations. But that's what we recommend. And that's the bottom line of the paper, uh, that it would be much, it would be useful if people would invest a bit more time looking into the, uh, the way that you protect protein molecules in, in uh, plunge freezing in cryo-EM from the air-water interface by perhaps exploring and developing better detergent molecules. So thank you very much.